So in this video, I'm going to show you how to oil a motor without those little plugs that you would uh, add, normally add oil in. If you check out the manual that came with this furnace, it says it doesn't need to be oiled. Well, that's not true. We got to get in there and get some oil in. Want to make sure that this is in the off position. If you have a switch like that, that's just gonna turn off the power to the furnace because you don't wanna mess with this while it's on. So this circuit board is attached to this metal frame here and there's uh, two screws we need to take off and then this can come out of the way. When you disconnect all of these, take a picture first, okay? You're not gonna remember. You're gonna think you're gonna remember where things go. You'll forget. So always take photos before you disconnect wires. It's gonna save you so much of a headache later. of all the wires and everything you don't want to uh, pinch them on anything it is pretty big release this uh, wheel blower wheel from the motor shaft right here so that when I undo the motor it can come out. Then I take out these four bolts and the grounding strap, disconnect it from the capacitor and it's free. Just to make sure this capacitor is not holding any charge, uh, which I don't think it is, but uh, I have this little discharge probe that I use for old TVs. And uh, you can see it's not all metal. I'm insulated here. I'm just going to touch these two prongs and uh, it basically shorts it and drains the energy out of there. So now these will be safe to disconnect. There we go. On the back of the motor you'll need to take out these four bolts like this. On the other side are some nuts. They go all the way through. So I already removed them here. So we'll take the last two out. Okay, and you can wiggle off this piece here. And these are going to be a little bit stuck probably. It'll take a little wiggling. You're going to remove this one. Okay, and the back pops off like that. Now, this is where we need to oil. If you look inside here, you're gonna see, see that stuff up there? It looks like fibrous wad, like a um, cotton ball kind of thing. That stuff needs oil in it. And what happens is, there's a spot on here, right here. That's an opening where it's like a sponge soaked with oil and it keeps, when the uh, shaft is inside, it's going to keep rubbing on that oil-soaked fiber and keep the shaft oiled. So the one on the back with this cap here is not so bad. It still has oil in it. But the one closer to the blower wheel is totally dry. I can look inside here and these fibers are completely dry. In here it's very dark, so it must have got pretty hot. And this has got to be where the squeak is coming from. So let's take a look at the oil. So this one, sometimes you'll see people use, and this is nice because there's this long hose that comes out, and so this can reach way far into where those plugs are. You can fill it in like that. Now, I didn't find a plug on this motor, so um, we're not going to use that anyway. This stuff brags about being a good oil for electric motors, a quarter horsepower or higher. And I'll have links in the video description to these and you can pick them up on Amazon or wherever. Um, this is pretty common stuff. And I'm gonna oil both of them, just soak them pretty good. Yeah, this, is, this is totally dry. No wonder it was squeaking. Be sure not to oil too much. You don't want the oil to get on the windings of the motor. It can ruin the protective coating and that would shorten the life of the motor. 
So the oil's all soaked. I did quite a bit actually, so I know it's enough. Uh, I put a scratch in here before I took it off, so I just align up the scratches. There we are. Here to here. Just makes it a little easier when putting this back together. You might want to clean your blower wheel while you're at it. If you've never done it, those blades are likely really caked on with some dust. So use a hose and scrub it down because the dust that builds up on there doesn't just blow off with like an air compressor or anything. It's you got to kind of scrub each blade. So the shaft is keyed. There's a flat side right there. So that's got to go match up and the um, bolt needs to hit that flat part. Okay. That way it won't come loose on you. It'll keep it nice and firm. All right, now we'll do the uh, capacitor wires right there. If your motor's having a hard time um, starting to run, if it's uh, making a weird kind of humming noise, it could be that your capacitor's bad and these go bad all the time. Real cheap and easy fix. So now when I'm tightening the blower wheel, it's got to be kind of in the middle here. Not too far this side, not too much uh, on this side. You don't want it rubbing when it spins. Let's go put this back in. So you can see in there, there's two little lips. It has to go in. All right, now I'm gonna turn it on and see how we did. Now this will run with this cover off, but not with that bottom cover off. There's a safety trip switch down there. So you have to at least have that cover on, but I can run it with this off. So let's turn this on. And the LED will blink that it's going on startup. And listen to that. That fan is running great. Sounds absolutely beautiful. Might as well talk about how this works. When you start it, you can just see that this uh, blower wheel just started spinning on. It goes through these certain stages. First thing that happens is that fan's gonna kick on for a few minutes. Then this is gonna kick on. Then the next thing you're gonna see in here is this uh, glow that's the igniter there and then the gas is going to kick on and you'll see the flames i heard the switch here comes the gas flame sensors right over there so these aren't hard to fix if you know the order that things are supposed to happen so let's say that your heater's not working and the fan kicked on. You saw the thing glow, but then no gas ever came out. Well, then you know you have a, a problem with the gas. Or let's say you never saw anything glow right there. Then you have a, a problem with the uh, igniter. But let's say the gas is going on and then all of a sudden it stops. Well, the problem could be your flame sensor uh, it needs to be sanded down and cleaned up a bit. So the problems aren't so bad because everything happens in an order. There's a process to the whole thing. So based on where you are when it cuts out, well, that's where you know the problem is. At least it helps with some of the problems. Hope this has helped you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I have a lot of uh, different home repair videos, appliance videos. That's gonna do it. Success, it's late at night and this house is cold, so I'm gonna go to bed. Have a good night.
Take care.